Hello, savages. It is I, Daddy Jeff. I thought I'd start at the beginning of this podcast a little bit differently than normal. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of time out now that we're about 47 episodes deep. To first of all say a big thank you to every single one of you. Uh, a lot of you have listened to the podcast across the whole spectrum of the last few months with all my different guests, with me doing solo episodes, etc, etc. We'll know that this podcast isn't just a place for us to laugh, hopefully share some comical ideas, some observational and topical humour, some personal stories, a little bit of empathy, but it's also a place for me to release, I guess, the creative juices that I have flying inside of me all the time. I may, I've made it sound sexual already. God damn it. You get the point I'm making. There's a lot inside of me that I want to put out into the world, and it's performative, it's hopefully joy-inducing, and some of it's educational, and this podcast has definitely given me a platform to do that. So I want to say thank you to every single one of you. We've now hit over 25,000 unique listeners that have tuned into this podcast, that are listening on Spotify, SoundCloud, Pandora, iTunes, Google Play, Podchaser, whatever app or music site you're listening to it on, or watching the videos on YouTube. And that really does touch me inside my heart box, make me feel very, very good. My aorta is swelling with love and passion for every single one of you beautiful bastards. I wanted to also shout out our brand new patrons. Um, one of the things that drives this podcast is word of mouth. If you guys are telling your friends about how good it is, if you're sharing clips, I, I post those regularly on Instagram, on Twitter, of course, in the Discord, on my Facebook group as well, Jeff Leach Comedian. Uh, if you can share those with your friends, grab a clip. I might even put a folder up where you can grab your favorite clips and then share those directly and post them out on your own social media. But that really does help. Word of mouth is what drives this community and makes it get larger every single episode. Uh, and I really do rely on you guys to help me with that. So thank you very much for stepping up to the plate. And in particular, thank you very much to the members of the community who've become patrons. Uh, if you don't know what that is, there's a website called Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, Patreon.com, that allows people to directly support projects that they enjoy. So with this podcast, that means you guys go across and pledge a little bit of money for some kind of perks or returns. So if you're donating five bucks a month, you'll get advanced information, you'll get access to the private Discord, if you're doing $20 a month, then you'll get personal shout outs, you'll get a wrap at the end of each month. If you're doing 30 a month, then you'll get a postcard handwritten with a little drawing drawn on there, maybe a poem, maybe a joke, definitely some heartfelt messages that I will post to you every single month. So there's a load of different ways to support the podcast. Um, if you haven't done so, please check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Savage Snowflake is the address that you need. Uh, it's just above my head if you're watching this on YouTube. And finally, I wanted to thank our sponsors as well. Boundless Tech, there they are. Logo up in the top left-hand corner. Boundless Tech have been wonderful by supporting from a very early stage. And we're going to have some new sponsors coming in over this month. Um, it's really, really, I don't know, it's it's quite heartwarming to to feel that we're now gaining some traction. Because this is a community effort. This is a podcast that features me and friends from comedy and TV and film and the adult acting world and the music world talking. But that conversation would have nowhere to go if you guys weren't there and part of the conversation as well. By listening, by tuning in, by sending me feedback, by replying with your tweets, your messages of support, constructive criticism, your positives, your negatives. All of that helps to shape this into a better podcast. And um, I really truly feel quite blessed that you guys have been such uh, an active part of this so far. Anyway... I'm getting too teary. Let me just do some shout outs for the brand new patrons on patreon.com forward slash savage snowflake. Big shout out to the following RR Lax Bro. I salute you, sir. You're a beautiful individual, and I hope your children are many and strong in their numbers. Zim Double O, you know I love you, boo. I've been thinking about you every day for a year. Is it time we finally made it official? I think so. Jenny Nitz. I tell you what, if I needed someone to knit me a blanket of love, it would be you, my darling, because you fill me with joy every time I see your cherubic little face. Guntis, the one, the only, a powerful Viking, striding across the landscape to donate a little bit of dollar to me each month. I appreciate you, you powerful champion. And finally, but not least, Gary Sloan. Gary, you know what? When it comes to friends, you're there. You're dependable. 
You make me feel loved in ways that I've never felt loved by a man before. Who knows? Maybe today's the day I finally change sides. <laughs> anyway, guys, I love you. Thank you very much to the patrons. Thank you very much to you guys, the listener. And without further ado, let's get back into the next episode. Bye, savages. This episode of the Savage Snowflake podcast is brought to you by Boundless Technology. Boundless Technology strives to advance in the cannabis industry by creating innovative products with portability and stealth in mind. Aiming to deliver an affordable, efficient and straightforward experience for the consumer, Boundless offers an alternative to the traditional joint or water pipe. Enjoy the taste, smells and effects of cannabis at lower vaporization temperatures with Boundless Technology products. Use coupon code SAVAGE for 10% off all Boundless Technology products at bndlstech.com. Follow Boundless on all social media at bndlstech. And if you want to show your support for the podcast, head to patreon.com forward slash savage snowflake to donate as little as $1 a month. Oh, that's savage. Let's get to it. Savage. Oh, savage indeed. What's going on, savages? Welcome to another episode of the Savage Snowflake podcast with me, Jeff Leach. Uh, your, your, your confidant, your friend, your brother, your lover, your mother, your sister, your carer, your student, your teacher, your sensei, your senpai, and of course, your batting boy. Uh, it's good to be <laughs> back. Um, I've just sat here for about the last half an hour and bored uh, our next guest whilst I tried to sort out various technical issues. It's, it sucked. We had two mics set up, two cams set up. We've had to strip it all down. Um, fortunately, I haven't stripped down. Um, <laughs> although I think this woman would be comfortable around that because she is an adult film star. She's also an entrepreneur uh, and a wonderful human being who I met at the Pornhub Awards. It's Kenna James, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Kenna. How are you? Hi, Jeff. I'm great. How are you? I'm all right. I realized that in my pursuit, I've tried to set this up very uh, professionally in this <laughs> Vegas hotel room. So I'm here performing at the, at the Comedy Cellar at the Rio for a week, uh, and Kenna's based out here. And I thought, let's do a podcast, and I'll make it really professional. I have two cams, <laughs> got all the lights set up nicely so we can get the video and get the audio, and then it all systematically fucked up, and you sat here like an absolute angel. <laughs> <laughs> and have just stared at a 34 year old man not really knowing how to use the technology has at his disposal it you know was... what you know how to do it better than i did nah it's very i couldn't have done you. a thing you just sat here and occasionally <laughs> snort laughed uh, as i tried to make it work and now i've really what i've ultimately done is invite an adult film star to have a conversation and not have a sexual experience in a hotel room in vegas for once kind of weird Except what I've now done is managed to fuck up all the technology, so we've ended up having to sit on a couch that looks like a fucking casting couch. So, um, so yeah, so so I'm here for the job, and I think I could be the best porn actor out there. Do you think I have what it takes to make it happen? I don't know, but we're about to find out. There we go. Let me Cue get my music. butthole out. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> slap bass. They don't do slap bass anymore, do they? No, not that I know of. That's like 70s porn. Oh, yeah, you're going way back. You're going to like full bush porn too. That's, yeah, which is nothing wrong with that. Love mm. a little bush. You know, I like, you know, a woman being a woman. It's nice to have a little, woo-hoo, hello. A little I'm is an adult. nice. A little is nice. A little. A little. If it's still wrapped around your butthole, ladies, I don't know if that's a little. Like the little, uh, it's almost like a um, like a pair of earmuffs or a scarf wrapped around. <laughs> kind of, yeah. A little pink pucker bum hole. <laughs> uh, I like a smooth anus. And I, I, I preach. I practice what I preach. Does that make sense? Of course. So if I want a woman to be maintained, I keep my shit, literally and metaphorically, clean and <laughs> hygienic and nice down there. As you should. But then also, it's real popular for women just to be completely bald downstairs, and it's nice sometimes. I think that's kind of an infant, an infantile nature that apparently seems to be quite prevalent in porn, which is how do we make this girl look as young as possible. Remove all the hair. I don't know so much. I don't know. So, but I am a completely bald downstairs woman. But my yeah, is- but that's because of alopecia. This is a wig, isn't it? <laughs> she had to put it on before we started recording. I did. I did. I do my best to keep <laughs> it's it a bit wonky. Good. Hang on, there you go. It's all right. It's good. Um, yeah, but that's personal choice. Personal choice is one thing. But isn't it? I feel like there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a like you. You're definitely falling into the hot teen. Hot teen has her innocent. Virgin butthole oh, administered to by daddy. Like it's, you hit that it's, target. It's inevitable. Like you know, you're young, you're pretty. You got a smooth bum hole. I do. <laughs> I have a very smooth bum. What hole are you gonna do? Keep That's it that way. Sticker in the teen category. Yep, pretty much. And you had braces up until very recently. Mm, well, mine are invisible. Thank God. You got well, the, invis- the Invisalign's. Didn't you have like proper ones on top before? Never. Oh, really? 
Never, never, oh, never. Oh, okay. I thought you had it. Oh, I just assumed. Because that's another porn fetish, isn't it? It is, and it's one I did not want to go down. I'm already teeny enough. I already look 16. I don't need to look 12. Well, I don't think you look 16. I think you look like a young woman. You look 18. Oh, well, you look 18. that's nicer than the guy the <laughs> other day on the plane that called me a 16-year-old. Oh, really? And I don't think you look like a child, but you also, you know, yeah, you definitely do that young thing. Whereas the other guests I've had on uh, who are in the adult film industry, you know, Tanya Tate and Cherie DeVille, they're both straight in a MILF. Like, oh, absolutely. Like super MILF. I mean, one is literally a MILF. Oh, yeah, literally. <laughs> and uh, the other one didn't start porn until she was 30. Yeah. Uh, whereas amazing. you obviously got into it younger. I did. I was 19. That That's like 18, right? Pretty much. Oh, no, 19. I was 19. 19. Sorry, I thought you said 18. 19. All right, so 19, you waited a year. I it did. wasn't like you were sitting there And I was going, almost 20. I was come like... Come on, 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 I was almost 20. Did I was three months. Hmm? Did you say pum? Did or you say pum? All the did pum? Did I? What did you say? All the pum? I thought you all just the went, porn. Oh, all the porn. All the porn. I thought you went all the pum and that made me really chuckle because in <laughs> England, that's like what uh, gangsters or like rude boys, we call them rude boys, you call them gangsters, right? right? So like, uh, yeah, like hood kids, you know? Yeah. They would say pum. Oh. Because I think it's a Jamaican Patois slang, pum. The pum pum. It means, oh, it means yeah. pussy. And I thought you were just dropping that in there for my benefit because, you know, I'm British and obviously clearly a fucking ghetto gangster. <laughs> clearly. Check my bling bling. Clearly. Right? Clearly <laughs> on a budget gangster. I'm like the MGK of yeah. comedy. Baller on a budget, yeah, baby. Yeah, I'm Machine Gun Kelly. I'm Machine I'm machine Gun Belly Laughs. That's what they call me. Machine Gun Belly Laughs. I'm coining it. <laughs> yo, yo, you're ready to laugh? <laughs> Yeah, fuck Eminem. And that's it. I just take on like the oldest comedians. Just like, Gilbert Gottfried, I'm calling you out, bitch. I'm, I'm in. I would see this. All right. I would pay attention to this. Nice. Uh, you ever thought about taking up some other kind of career? Because you're obviously in the adult film industry, but you're like a gamer. I feel like there's a natural progression to stream maybe. I definitely want to stream. Um, I'm hoping within the next couple of months to start streaming on Twitch. Um, I also exclusively am... butthole playthroughs. <laughs> the smoothest butthole on Twitch, and it's all joystick-based gaming. That you that would that would go really and well. And instead of the joystick, you have a butt plug, <laughs> and you just fucking Stick control it, it just... with your bum hole. Yeah, <laughs> that's some niche fucking porn right there. Have they not done that? How has no one stuck a joystick inside of a woman's bum hole? Well, now I'm gonna try to have to do this. Maybe not in the bum hole first, but uh, you know. Dude, can Try I get uh, an exec producer credit yes. on the on the video? Yes. <laughs> yes. I can send my mom it and just be like, she'll be like, what, how's it going in America? Exec produce my first movie. <laughs> oh my goodness, can I see it? Yeah, of course, mom. Send her a link. And it's just, yeah, just butthole, butt plug, key, key joystick, uh, sorry, joystick, <laughs> gaming porn. But you got to win. I'm going to try to play Pac-Man. Pac-Man would be the inevitable or space it when I can't operate I can't, those can't push the button really well you could like, maybe. instead of stimulating your clitoris the guy if there's a guy <laughs> present he does the buttons whilst you're doing the butt plug <laughs> I'm just saying it's an option it is an option I'm really glad I smoked <laughs> weed before this that's uh, <laughs> um, you saw me do stand up last night you enjoy it I loved it I thought you were fucking hilarious. Came down to the show with some friends and uh, chuckled it up in the back. I could hear, I could hear a couple of snorts, which I assume <laughs> now was you. I didn't hear anybody else snorting. So, well, although it is Vegas, there's probably a lot of people snorting in Vegas. And well, I'm, yeah, <laughs> even when they're not enjoying themselves. <laughs> uh, Why did you move to Vegas? Why Vegas? Uh, because I refuse to live in LA, and this is as close as I want to live to my job. What's wrong with LA? I do not like LA even just a little bit. Oh shit! Wow. Why do you hate it so much? I just. I am forever more of a small town girl. Vegas gives me a little bit of that small town feel. Just I, a small town girl. I came from a town of 16,000. Just digging her butthole. <laughs> she's playing Pac-Man now. And she's getting all the ghosts, the ghosts. I like this rendition. You should build an album. Cherries. <laughs> buttholes. <laughs> it's a strange combination. <laughs> Keep on for the nation, yeah. And then you do a a butthole salad. I'm just got butthole in the head now. That was your fault from the beginning. Yeah, it is because I'm I'm kind of the one that I think brought up butthole. 
Um, at the Pornhub Awards, um, we met afterwards at the after party mm -hmm. with uh, mutual friends, uh, lovely Danny Daniels and Cherie Deville. But when um, earlier on, I, there was a girl who got best anal scene, and she went up and she thanked her parents for making such a beautiful butthole. And I thought that was, is there, I assume she was being funny because it was fucking hilarious. She looked serious, but I thought she was just playing deadpan. Why do you think there's so, many, so much crossover between ladies in pornography and being amusing? I... Because you're funny as well. You've been, you know, you've got, you got your chops about you. Know you know what's funny is I'm never intentionally funny. It's always accidental. I don't know. I don't think that's true. I think most of mine is completely accidental. I try not to just think before I start talking, especially if it's something like this. Yeah. And just give you the real answer that's and not think about it. So you're saying it's not, it's not, it's not intentional no, for a lot of these ladies, is, you think? Well, I, I can't speak for them. This is just for me. I think a lot of them are absolutely hysterical. Yeah. And I think that's Asa, just... Asa, Kira. Oh, I love Asa. She's kind of known within the industry for being hilarious. You know? I love Asa. Yeah. She's out. See, I thought it was because potentially, other than being a court jester, which is basically what we <laughs> fucking are, um, you know, sex workers, is the, that's the oldest prof profession in the world. That was the oldest, and then it yeah. was cracking jokes. It was literally like, what can I fuck? And then also, who's going to tell me a story <laughs> afterwards? Right. Like, or before, whatever. Or before. Yeah, exactly. Or during, even. Tell me a story you know. so I can go and fuck. Well, like, <laughs> the fucking was first on the mind. And I feel like with a lot of um, porn actresses, you are allowed... To have the uh, the 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 outgoing um, oration abilities that comics are allowed as well. Oh, so yeah. you can say whatever the fuck you want, because what are people going to do? They're going to go. She said a thing, yeah, that was a bit outlandish or a bit edgy. We're going to strike her, put on the blacklist. <laughs> from, and you're like, I don't give a fuck. Like I, I, I fuck for a living. Like I, that's like, I'm already on a social blacklist in one sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. People exactly. still frown upon pornography, even though millions and millions what billions of people are watching so many it. people watch it also in this country especially i feel like you probably you ladies um would ac account for 60 percent less school shootings because teenage boys are able to jerk off to what you girls do there would be a few more fucking crazies there out there would. with guns running around there probably if it would wasn't be. for pornography yeah i mean hey porn's good honest. Porn's good. Yeah. Also, it's you know, virgins. Most porn's good. It's not. It's not like prolific. You know, eighteen-year-old studs running around shooting up schools. It's, no. it's generally yeah. <laughs> it's lonely generally... guys going. The girl next door didn't want to talk to me, so I fucking shut the school up. It's like if you just watch the Kenna James movie, yeah. you might be more relaxed, bro. Yeah. Just, just take a chill pill. Chill the fuck you out. You know, get some lotion. Maybe light a candle. Box of Kleenex? Dude, I mean, first of all, you're assuming this boy has any kind of scented candle. I, I didn't say like it had to be scented. It could be like it could be like one of those little fake candles. Like, oh, like that's in the comedy the cellar down there. And you just wow. like click the light on on the bottom. What a depressing, unromantic <laughs> masturbation that would be. I didn't say it had to be nice. Ah, uh, that's true. It's just got to be stress relieving at that point. <laughs> some of the worst, I think some of the, like, the most common um, ways of getting ourselves off are not remotely sex sexy. They're not sexy. No. I'll find myself middle of the day just like, I just feel a little pent up. Let me go and jack off. And then it will end up being me just stood over my bathroom sink. <laughs> just on my phone. Just, all right, okay. All right, cool. Let me just skip forward. Okay, all right. A bit, a bit. Yep, yeah, find okay, it, find so, it. Oh, there we go. There okay, we go. Cool. Yep, all right, that's, that's the bit I like. Okay. And, blah, 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 blah. Right. Blah, blah, blah. And then. All right, all right that's good. Don't okay. even like finish it up. No, you no just, rating. Just immediately delete the you browser You just immediately history. delete it and then go on. Immediately delete the browser history and then just clean up, you know, wash up. And then go back to my day. Yeah. Whereas you, you guys give a, a theatrical element to it. We do try. How much of it is performance, and how much of it is genuine enjoyment of the? For the me, most of it's genuine enjoyment. I mean, you know, there are going to be. Or is that a that... thing you have to say as a performance? No, absolutely right? not. You can say whatever you want. I can happily tell you that there are just guys that do not get me off. Yeah. And I mean, there's just there's no connection. It's dead. It did not hit, did not how many, spark. How many of those have you had where you've just gone, oh, shit, I have to do this? It's work, but also... I mean, over four years, you you have a handful of them that <sighs> male and female like, not just one or the other. Yeah. I mean, well, I've had a conversation with one of your friends. We won't say which one. And she was talking about a particular porn actress who just has a really, really, really smelly vagina. <laughs> and it's not nice. <laughs> No. And whether it's BV or whatever the fuck it is, it's not good. 
and she needs to sort out her disgusting fucking vagina. But I, she said, I you can't say anything. No, you You know can't. one of those as well. I, I <laughs> have one. I have a very similar one. Oh. What, vagina? Yeah, not mine. <laughs> not mine. Mine is nice. You're out in yourself. I keep mine very vaginas. pristine. Oh, no, God, I've no. got one of those I too. I keep mine very pristine. No, but I've got Tiny one of those Tiny penises? Stories. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've got one of those. <laughs> Micro dicks? How did you know? It's so tiny. <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> but it's smaller than yours. Oh, it's ridiculously <laughs> tiny. I use my rings as cock rings as well. That's the double. You get like one of them on there. I couldn't even fit one on there. Really? Thank goodness for that. So you say that you actually do enjoy it. You get into it. I do. I love my job. I truly, truly do love my job. All right. How'd you end up? I mean, it's an obvious question, but how'd you end up doing that rather than studying biochemistry or working at a bank or being a basketball coach or the millions of other things you've done? (laughs) I actually was in high school. um, I bet you fucking were. I was. And some guy came up to you and went, hey, you want to be in some movies in about three to six months? (laughs) (laughs) I actually started off as a stripper. Um, oh, okay. There in you high go. school. In high school? I was two months from graduating and I started So you were stripping. 18? I was 18. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Although in some states you can dance at 16 with your parents' permission. <laughs> You're not going to name <laughs> Is states. Is that true? But that is absolutely true. That's fucking I met one. mental. She's been dancing since she was 16. Her name was Trouble. She was... That was her dancer name That was as her well. dancer name. She oh, was... Oh, my God. I, I really, truly did adore her. She was a character. Um. I fucking bet, but also <laughs> probably a little damage because I'm sorry if you're 16 years yeah. on, you're dancing at 16. There's there's some shit going on. I there. think there's still some damage if you start off at 18 and you're doing it. There of was course. definitely some damage in my area. I'm gonna go ahead and be very honest with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, me too. Don't worry. Oh yeah, we're all damaged at yeah. 18. Everybody's everybody's damaged in one way or another. I think you're hard pressed to find any human being in this day and age who hasn't got some kind of issue. Oh god, yeah. Good luck finding one of those. People even like almost like to have. A know? condition. Do you remember when being depressed? I, I I suffer from depression, for instance. I have quite I bad depression. Well. Yeah. So that was never a cool thing when I was a kid. It no. was never like... That's not something you advertise. Yo, I got depression because then kids would go, oh, fucking sad wanker, and they'd hit you. Yeah. Right? It was, but yeah. now it's kids are going, well, you know, I have, I have anxiety, okay. anxiety and I have some depression. I have depression. Pretty OCD. I've got some, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, a fucking, all right, chill, chill out. Chill, chill. They're so proud of it. I know. I, I, I hate it. It's it's not something I'm proud of. It's not something that's fun to have. It's not something I think should be a happy thing for somebody to have. Yeah, it's fucking disgusting. It's terrible. How dare you? How dare you Worst be proud thing. of having that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good. But you found ways to deal with it. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, the best you can. Fucking the shit out the, of people. <laughs> that helps. It's it helps. Fu- it, it, it's a fun escapism, isn't it? It is. It really is. Because um, you get to go off and... Who knows if you'll ever see the person again. There's no commitment. It's just, it's like, hey, we're going to have sex today. Awesome. Nice to meet you. All right. Stick your dick in. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> like you say, man, just stick your dick in. <laughs> this film, stick your dick in six, volume six. <laughs> She's a naughty girl. She just wants you to stick your dick in. <laughs> Do it. Get out. Stick it in. I like how direct that is. Do you think as, um, um, a, a point where you can lose the interest in the sex. And I'm using just... I'm, I've never worked... Oh, actually, that's a lie. I have worked <laughs> in the sex industry. I did a documentary about male escorting. And as part of the documentary, as an immersive documentary, I became a male escort. But I had a page. And then we went through one agency. And I had one client. So I had sex with a complete stranger with a woman for money. Yeah. And uh, she was hot. She was a stripper. Oh. And she used to watch nice. me on TV a lot. So when she saw it, she was like, oh my God, I want to fuck this guy. And also for her, it was a role reversal. She was suddenly in control because she was paying for the sexual experience. Right, got it, got it. Um, but that side, it's not my. <laughs> j- it was for the purpose of a TV program. Right. Um, I think that there's um, a point as a uh, just a just a sexual guy. Mm-hmm. When I was young, when I was fucking to escape, like I used to do with drugs and like I used to do with alcohol. And so, as soon as I realised I was doing that, it had to get more and more. More and more fetishized, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not weird shit, but you go from like just quite straight sex, you know, mixing up the positions, right. but just you and your partner. So, all right, now I'm going to get the fucking toy in here. We're going to try that. this. All right, let's get the butt plug in there. All right, get the nipple clamps. All right, let's fucking electrify the butt <laughs> plug. You, and then eventually I'm going, I'm filming while shit's here and i got toys here and here and I'm doing it and we're fucked up and we're fucking and it's crazy. And I just went, oh, and I remember catching sight of myself 
like in the fucking um, what's it called? <laughs> what's the fucking movie with Christian Bale, where he's a psychopath, and he's like this crazy psychopath. Is it not called? What's it called? You know the really famous film where Psycho? he's fucking where he's fucking that chick and he's looking at himself. In the mirror, he's like, yeah, and he's fucking flexing his guns. What's that movie? No idea. Oh my god! It's like <laughs> the most famous Christian Bell, and he does like a thousand press ups every day. You know the f- anyway, whatever. You gotta watch it. And he does this, and I realized it was that, but I didn't feel proud and strong like him. I felt embarrassed. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing to get off? Are you not worried you're gonna hit a point where sex loses its interest because? You've done everything, you know? I think if I get to the point where sex starts losing interest for me, I think I'm just going to get out of the business. I mean, to be quite honest, I'm not going to do it just for the paycheck. I'm, yeah. I actually genuinely want to give people a product that they can enjoy, either by themselves or with their loved one or with their group. I love you discussing fucking people as products. That's so wonderful. <laughs> it's very business acumen. It is. I'm very business mindset. Um, you have to be this, these I, days in a pornography, right? You do. I mean, and most girls don't realize that. There's there's a there's a handful of really good ones that do, but yeah. most of them treat it as this giant party. Yeah. Um, I just do a bit camming every few days, and I make some money, and then I, you know, right. And it's like a few things in my butt. Right. And it's like that's your business, though. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. your business. That's oh no, your the job. girls who are doing these like premiums. You got premium Snapchat and all that business. I don't, but I don't have time to keep up with it right now. <sighs> you just got to start that shit. I know, I know. Um, I think fan, what well, Fan Centro is the big one. That fan they do Centro a lot of is stuff. the big good one. So yeah. all the girls I know, they'll they'll go. They got like between a thousand and twenty thousand people paying thirty five dollars a month. Oh yeah. What? Yep. That's fucking insane money, isn't it? And they're taking 80%. They told me they get 80%. Different people that's, on different things. That's quite a lot, right? Yeah, that's good. But even good. if you're getting 50% of that, that would still be... It's still better fucking, than getting yeah, nothing. 10,000 times 15 bucks. $15,000, right. $20,000 a month? Yeah. A month! Can't complain. Just to fucking play with their vaginas and buttholes. Yep. I'm in the wrong business. That's... Yeah. Yeah, you are. I could never make that money, though, could I? Because like, men are really just a prop mm, in sex. Depends in on the porn. guys. Depends on the guys. There are some... Bigger name guys that uh, that have done very well for themselves. Okay, like tell me who? Who's like someone? Um, one of the guys Manuel who's... Ferrara. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, James Dean has done very well for himself. Well, well, he had a little bit of a hiccup when you know he was accused of terrible shit by mm. some people. It was left at an accusation, so I. You don't know. Don't know. If you don't know, it's no point getting involved in it, right? Exactly. Oh, it's not my, not my bird, not my thing. That's I'm not my like... dick to bear. Have you done a scene with him, though? I have many. He was actually my first boy girl. Oh, really? He's always been absolutely wonderful to me. He was a mentor for me when I first got in. Yeah. He's been great to me. Don't worry. This isn't the uh, exposed James <laughs> Dean episode. No, so I, no. I, I couldn't give a solitary fuck. As long as no one's getting hurt, that's like... Right. And I know there is quite a lot of that. Have you have you ever caught yourself in a situation where you've gone, all right, I don't feel fucking comfortable with this and had to bail out or get a friend once. to come over and... I, I did once. Um, but the company was very understanding. I had to cancel the scene. It was... Um, when I, I was very, very new in the industry yeah. and I got into a dom sub scene and didn't realize that I did have a limit, a hard limit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of discovered it in a bad way. That was kind of the end of that. Yeah. Have since gotten you know all over that. It's fine now, but, um, I did have to cancel that scene. But like I said, everybody was really understanding. I didn't have any issues with it. See, that's good. Maybe you came into it at the right time. In the it's, even socially, I feel like the social climate must have a knock-on effect, good and bad, to the sex industry. Yeah, and a lot of it's uh, also who you shoot with and who you shoot for, and certain companies there's... treat the girls well. Do you think there's um is it is it like a union? Is there is there almost is there a union a unionized element to the <laughs> industry? <sighs> I just I get these Not, impressions. There's a, a private forum for professional sex workers. So if you work within the sex industry, where they can share these are people not to work with. Or there's a forum to shut their or to go. Hey, really. I got a case of this, and I don't know what to do about. It. Can someone help? And you know what I mean, like an advice and. Not really. Not that I know of. Anyway, there could be, and I'm just not aware of it. Um, well, I know but, there's smaller ones in terms of WhatsApp groups. So it's like girls yeah. might have a WhatsApp group and go, "Hey, did a shoot with these guys? Not very nice, or you know, they were late on payment or whatever. Be careful of that." Right. They're, but no organized union. No, nothing that's just blatantly like, "Hey, here's what happened today." Should I feel I like just... Nina Hartley would set that up. She seems to be championing him for you know all the time for sex workers' rights, and she certainly has been quite a vocal voice in the politics of the sex work industry. She could set up the union. 
It wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's fucking make it happen, man. I think. What, what, do, you, do you do you feel that knock on effect from um, the God fearing America to always demonize sex, the sex working industry? Um, I just think people need to get over the fact that it's sex and everybody does it. Oh yeah, no, I'm with you. That's... I'm like, I'm very much an advocate for. You know, it would be nice if the industries were taken a little bit more um, seriously, seriously and under- seen as real businesses. Right. Because then, as a knock-on effect, girls would have more protections. You'd be able to go, all right, well, this is the way exactly. it's done. This is how You'd be able to keep your bank accounts without getting them shut down. Exactly. Contract standards. and right. Yeah, exactly. Money coming in regularly. Yeah. If people would just stop and sit here and think, oh, well, you know, I do the same thing. You're just mad because you don't get to do it with more people. You don't get to do it for money. Yeah. You don't have the nerve to do it. Well, it's also, I think it ties into religion a lot as well. I think it does. um, Which. Because Jesus hated fucking. Well, they did like washing the feet of prostitutes, didn't he? He really did. He was the first foot fetishist on document, on documented paper. Yeah, yeah. Old Jay Diggity. (laughs) He's out there just fucking soaping up the bubble. Didn't even have soap in those days. He used to make his own soaps (laughs) out of like honey combs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like the real deal, and you just. Fucking Revenue. Jesus was the first hippie. He was out back <laughs> in a little carved bowl that he made himself, obviously, being a carpenter. Oh, no, of, of course. Just fucking big pestle and mortar like that, wooden wooden pestle and mortar. And he was mashing up juniper beads, <laughs> beans, whatever they're called, berries, I don't know, <laughs> honeycombs, making a paste, washing the prostitutes' feet. Whatever got you off, dude. Jesus got mad pussy, I think. Probably. Do you reckon... Um, do you reckon um, that's the main reason for the demonization of the industry? Or is it because people ostensibly are, across the board, not great at sex to just see other people do it and make it look at least stylistically nice? I think I think a good part of it is religion. People are hung up on that aspect that sex is bad, yeah. especially with multiple partners and before marriage, blah, blah, blah. All the but crap. in the Bible, it's all right to fuck your first cousin. Right, yeah, no. It's, it's, <laughs> folks, it's not. It's not okay to fuck your first cousin. I'm Did, sorry. Whoa, it's also not okay to fuck your brother and your sister. Well, hang on a second. I just want to say to my Alabama listeners, that's not completely true. And Arkansas you guys, as well. you do Continue. you. Arkansas too, yeah. Oh, but baby, I lived on the border of Arkansas. You could hear the banjo strumming. Tell me about and growing Arkansas up. And Arkansas people, I do love you. You guys are awesome. I, I love you too. Because <laughs> I'm terrified that you're going to fucking pull up in a truck with a gun on your seat. And take my take my head off. That's what they would do. You want to do? You want to not fuck around with the Arkansas people? Well. They're famous for that. Oh no, sorry, that's Florida. Florida's famous. <laughs> sorry, Florida. I don't want to like put you in second place when you work so hard to get out there for fucking when you work so crazy hard to be lunatics. So where did you grow up there? Where was home? I grew up um, in Missouri and Indiana. Oh wow, yeah, that's small southern, town, right? A bit southern. small town, southern, right? Very small town. Wow. Okay. So like, let's let's make the picture. All right. So young Kenna James, she's running around. Let's say, still in the stripping days. That was still there, right? I uh, would be in Indiana. Yes, it was in Evansville. Okay. Well, outside of Evansville. Idyllic childhood. Did you grow up on a farm somewhere, running around the cornfields? Well, I was on a farm sometimes, helping, and it wasn't very. It was fun, until so you had to birth a dead cow. You birthed a dead cow. Yeah. Too. All right, that's that's. And then the yes. mom still died, and we had to get it out of the pasture. Oh my god! Also, I had good times. You witnessed we- double death. Yes. Well, I didn't witness the calf die. How old were you? Thirteen. Oh wow! All right, yeah, that's pretty. I mean, thirteen year, you know, you'd grown up a little, but still to see like a dead body come out of a live one, and then for I the big when you one grow up around it, well. you kind of grow up, kind of knowing what's going on. Did you do all that? Like, can you skin a hair and? Pull it, you know, fucking skin a, a rabbit and get the meat off it and put all the entrails out. Um, I've only skinned one animal and it was not for fun. I don't hunt. Okay. Um, I fish, but I only catch and release. I don't catch and keep. Um. And see, that always intrigued me because like, I love fishing. I don't do it very often. I've done it maybe twice in my entire life. But the times I have done it, it's been really fun. Yeah. And I'll catch fish and then I'll take them and I'll fucking bosh and then cut them open, get the guts out, and eat it. Yeah. Because I'm going, well, I'm putting it through the pain and the shock and the fear and the upset of being hooked through its well, fucking mouth. I'll tell you what, mouth. they actually don't. Nah, you can't say that. You're going to say that they've got only a few seconds of memory, right? Or fish have like a minute. And if you're careful when you remove the lure, you can pretty much No, nah, actually, I've read tests. I've read studies, unless they were proven to be wrong, that actually they don't feel the pain 
of it. Oh, through their cheek. Through their cheek. They just don't feel the pain. All right, like, still there isn't. distressing, right? Maybe for a few minutes. Until they forget. <laughs> but you see how that's like an interesting concept to be like, all right, you I know mean, what? if I caught something. I like animals and I catch and release and that's the humane way to do it. But the most humane way to do it is to not fish at all. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Unless, or is to get into the water and like fucking fish, become a fish charmer. And then you can like stroke, give it a little stroke. You know, some fish Become are Become Aquaman. Like, some fish are real kind. Yeah, exactly. Become got, Aquaman. You have to grow your hair. We're going to swap wigs after the show. Okay, sounds good. And you're going to get some fucking tattoos <laughs> on your forearms. And then you go out and you stroke the fish. There's a great video of these fish that clearly were oh, yeah. new to come and feed. And the person could like stroke the fish. They like to be right. Oh yeah, I've seen them. It's crazy, right? It is crazy. That's the most humane way to do it. Not to fucking, wait, wait, let me have a look at you. No, I, never, I never said I was the most humane person in the world. <laughs> I love animals. My Actually, my passion is to become a veterinarian. That's what I started going anymore. to college you can't fish for. anymore. Oh, absolutely can. The vet that taught me still went and hunt. No! But we also had a deer population issue, so our hunters did help with that. There you go. See, again, I, I don't mind that purpose and they, of hunting. And he hunt, when he hunted them, he ate them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't just yeah, for sport. Yeah, you give the meat to your friends. It, took some right, the you make deer jerky, deer ah, stew. I love it. Oh, God, it's so good. Deer breakfast cereal. <laughs> Never had that one. Deer um, cake. Just all the delicious, <laughs> all the delicious treats that you can make with deer. <laughs> yeah. Deer smoothie. I don't know. It's, it's kind of, I, I feel like, I don't know. I think you have to be all or nothing. You either have to be like, all right, I love creatures of all sizes and shapes. And therefore, I'm not even going to fish. Because I know that's going to put an animal through distress or that creature through distress, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have to be like, all right, I'm fucking cool with it. If it's for the purpose of hunting and eating that, yeah. I'll do it. That's how I kind of... Hunting yeah. for sport, you're just a cunt. I, I hate people who hunt for sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate people who hunt for sport. Well, that's because they're, they're normally weird fucking dudes as well. They're like like really lunatic. Yeah, dudes. they're just... I need to feel alive. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Okay. So you're a bad vegan. Terrible vegan. Terrible vegan. You Terrible go out and vegetarian. You regularly suffocate fish for two to three minutes. Oh, I regularly just eat in. meat in general. And that was growing up farmland time. Parents weren't farmers though. No, oh God, no. So what kind of an upbringing do we have? Not the most pleasant oh, of shit. upbringings. Okay. <laughs> I did um, say it before the podcast. Anything no, we No, and that's about? nothing that's off limits. Um, it's nothing that nobody already doesn't know. I've, you know, um, it's something that I've dealt with. My family and I have moved past. Um, I moved out. It was a very uh, still in contact with any of your family, day. or oh yes. Um, actually, we talk now. Things are better than they've ever been. I left oh. home at seventeen. Didn't talk to him until I was twenty. Um, and ever since then, everything's been really good. You know, they they finally become because there's no power struggle. Sure, there's no more. I'm I'm your boss. Now we're at we're at a level right here together. You're like, I'm self sufficient. He respects I'm doing me. My shit. Yeah. In return, I am for the first time in my life earning respect from my parents. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. kind of one of those deals. My parents um, had their demons. Right. They weren't there. I ended up raising my brother, who is five years younger than I am, who is basically my son. Okay. So. Well, you that's... have a great relationship with him, right? I do. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. He's my best friend and. The kid Little I would bro, take a bullet yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> what does he do? Nothing. Nothing yet. Okay. He's working it out. He's a young boy. He's still a young boy. He's isn't almost he? what, 19 five years? and it has no prospects. We don't grow up until we're at least like 30. Uh, There's always prospects. He'll find something. Don't worry. You are like a mum. You're like, I am. Oh, that <laughs> that <laughs> bloody boy of mine. Needs I to am. Pull his socks I up. just, I want the best for him. And <laughs> that makes sense. Of course you do. See, I'm gonna like obviously the obvious thing would to be would be to go, all right, okay, so difficult childhood, blah 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 blah. <laughs> stripping from a younger age. Is that what leads most women into pornography? You know? I would say no. Because no. that's not what led me there. I it's funny, I didn't even think about a career in stripping until I moved out on my own and I was I was thinking one day, I was talking to one of my friends back home and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And they're like, Well, have you ever thought about a strip club? It was someone else's fault. It was somebody else's idea. That's like it was great. Um, I went in first time in a strip club auditioning. Yeah. Um, got offered bad, the job. Bad dancing though, or good dancing? Um, I didn't try to do anything. I knew I couldn't, so it was pretty good. I okay. stuck to the basic and just followed the running rhythm. man. <laughs> no running man. Just Thank a God. little bit I, of light break dancing. I don't know if I would have gotten the job. In. Don't know if I would have gotten the <laughs> job with that one, but I do have a neat trick. From my uh, dancing days. All right, tell me what's the trick. Oh, here we go. A visual trick. Oh, you're gonna pop 
No, you're not going to dislocate your shoulder, are you? <gasps> what the fuck is that? What? I don't know if you can see that on the cam. Can we see that on the cam? Yeah, yeah. we can. Look at that. Jesus Christ. You've invert. Is that since? That's what are you out. doing? Oh, you're dislocating it. That's so you out. can do the over the rotate. I've never tried out. to do that because I'm terrified. I'm going to start tearing things again. Well, well, just that side. Yep, just that side. And, and why? How? I fell from the top of a stripper pole upside down. A girl had put lotion on. That's an that's a that's, that's an injury. An injury. Yeah, don't fucking do that. <laughs> I don't. That's not meant to do I... that. If that side doesn't do it, one day I'm going to go get it fixed. You know what? Though again, though, I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm always looking for um, the unique, right? So we got the butt plug, joystick, <laughs> anal play uh, video. You could also do a scene where instead of like, because I got to an age now where the thought of coming on a woman's face doesn't make me feel good it makes me feel rude and obnoxious and <laughs> disgusting and slightly like honestly i don't find like coming in if a girl wants to my coming in her mouth that's great well it's different than yeah, on your really, face but on someone's face why would i want to make uh, something that i think is beautiful and sexy fuck it up why would i want to fuck it up it's like i think it's a bit weird that way <laughs> but instead of that you can instead of a come on the face you could do a come into the weird... Come in the hole. Come in the... Exactly, the, the weird fucking dislocation. <laughs> no one's ever done that. I wouldn't say never. You reckon there's someone who's already had I, someone I don't know. I, when it comes to sexual <laughs> things anymore, I have learned to That's never question specific. it. too specific. I've elbow. thought that about many things that oh, have turned out to really not be I love it when specific. someone jizzes on my elbow. That's what I really like. I... I had a best friend in high school who could not stand her elbow being touched. Oh, yeah. But that's like a sensitivity, a weird sensitivity thing. She might have had a nerve ending issue or something like that. It was the greatest thing I have ever been. You used to blessed. fuck around with I her. Did. Ah, I did. Ah, you were awful person. I am a terrible person. What a bully. I am a terrible person. Why, where do you think that anger came from? Why are you so full of anger? Oh, it never came Hooking out of anger. Cooking fish, start, like suffocating fish, <laughs> fucking beating, bullying girls at school. Blaming strippers for your injuries. Well, it's kind of her fault. Yeah, she put exactly. lotion on. Yeah, you ever been dumb. on a pole with a lotion? Oh on? yeah, yeah. It's terrible. So many times. Yeah. I hate it. It's the worst it's, time for it's me. Terrible. I can't dance for shit round poles. <laughs> I've tried a couple of moves. It's very good core strength as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so the stripping was this friend's fault. She went, "Hey," she went, "I think you should do." Stripping. Oh, it was her idea. I would never say fault. Cause I will. You can say fault. Yeah. Yeah. You can say fault. So I started out as an 18-year-old stripper. I get what you're saying. It's, it sounds like it has a negative com, uh, com, uh, like a connotation, doesn't it? Kind of really? does. Yeah. The word fault has never been... No, you're right. All right, so what do I say? So what do I say? <laughs> it's, we, we have her to thank. There we go. For your butthole gracing the internet. She Pretty learned, much. Yeah, okay. That was the beginning. That and was then the I, beginning of it. From then, I, I learned about webcamming. Okay, so then you did some so camming. Then I, so then I transitioned from stripping... Then mm. camming, you're definitely, it's a lot more, I think it's way more social than stripping oh, and Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because Even though you talk to clients and regulars a lot at the at the bar. It's it's usually too loud and it's more about the dances and you don't have to have a lot of interaction. Yeah. Um, where camming is all interaction. Yeah, yeah. Like you, well, they want to know that, they want to feel like they're your friend of as course, well. And a lot of them are. I mean, a lot of them become that over time. Really? Yeah, I actually have. Truthfully. Truthfully. Good, good friends that you trust. Uh, yes. Okay. I have a couple of them, you know, fans turned friends. Okay, that's interesting. Because I, I, I know that there's lots of girls have uh, lots of fans that they have good relationships with and they know them and they would certainly refer to them as friends. But in reality, they're friendly acquaintances. They're not someone they would trust with the more difficult periods of time in their lives. You know, they're not uh, going to open up. I, I have at least two off the top of my head I can think of. Wow, that's interesting. All right, let me look at that. Because I thought... I thought that would be weird because their interest in you was born out of a sexual interest for the most part. For the most part, my, my two on my on the top of my head actually were not born off of sexual interests. Um, but their fans turned... Well, they weren't... When I say fans, I call everybody in the beginning a fan. Regardless, <laughs> no matter where you come from. Whoa, what about me? Am well, I, am I, I in a in fan? Person. Am I I'm a fan person? No. All right, okay. Oh, okay. Got my nose. <laughs> I'm the one dressed up like a street magician. That was the weirdest thing anyone's ever done to me in an interview. Tried to take there my nose go. off. Yeah, you got me. You booped me. You, there you booped. Go. I booped. booped. You really threw me. That was quite funny. <laughs> I've never had someone take my nose, pinch my nose. Now you have. Yeah, that was quite fun. <laughs> Maybe that's my secret erogenous zone. I just didn't know it. it had to be done the right way. It's like a finger the in the nose. ass. It's like just you have to find a woman who does it the right way. 
<laughs> granddad used to get me only like half masks when he used to do it. Got your nose. And I'd oh, be like, no. oh, granddad, I got another half a boner. <laughs> but now I'm fully erect. So thanks. <laughs> okay, sorry. So you were saying. I have no idea. Oh, wait. Cam wait. in, we're talking about real friendships. Right, right, right. So yeah, I, I was have... asking. I'm not in the friend zone. I'm not. I said no. fan zone. Fan, fan zone. zone. <laughs> I'm definitely in the friend zone, but I'm not in the. Fa- I'm not in the fan zone. No. Okay. You are definitely a friend. Well, you were also a friend of a friend. Oh, as well. Shit. So that. See, but look, here's, here's the thing. Let me. You came in, friend. And I don't want to appear like a, people watching this or listening to this are going to go, "Wow, what? What? Come? Why do you say?" That? But here's the thing. We're we're I, we're friendly acquaintances. We are. But you say like we're uh, you know we're friends, and when I say when I think about us, I think you're someone who I could definitely have a fr- a real friendship with because you you come the two conversations we've had. Well, yes, you've been you're bright and you're funny, and that's what I look for in my friendships: bright, funny people, right? Um, and oh, and nice people as well. But you know, well, what I mean? yeah, well. bright and funny goes with that. <laughs> but uh, but there is there's levels, isn't there? I of think course. It, in this in in this side, especially on the west coast, people have lots of friends, but I feel like. Are they people who come and help you move your fucking house? Oh, yeah. friend. Like, I don't have... I I think I may have four or five of those friends. Okay. Well, I'm not... We're not there yet. No, we're not there yet. I'm not going to drive four and a half hours... No, I wouldn't. ...to help you move. I wouldn't either. But if I was in the same town, I'd come and help you move. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that for you. Yeah. If I had nothing on. We're kind of there. We're like the... (laughs) the, We're at like the almost stage one of friendship. Uh, yeah, where yeah, we're yeah, almost yeah, 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 yeah. We've almost got like the first bat, the friendship badge. Almost, it's not quite there. It's we're, not quite. We're on the Boy Scouts retreat or the Girl Guides retreat, right. right? We're just fucking. We've had two retreats. We're almost right. We're almost there. We're, yeah, we're real close. That. But that's what I'm saying is that when I talk about, I have uh, real friendships with some fans, but I know that they're not my real friends. Right. Are my fucking bros like Seth and Jay in New York and Saeed or my best friend Pete back in England or the Euro crew I have there and those people we met through very different ways right and there was something that built to that beautiful friendship of course whereas someone who I know was a fan first and foremost it's difficult to it's difficult to ever become true close friends with them although I don't know actually that's a lie one of my new friends he's he was a, a viewer maybe I'm talking shit I'm talking shit see you know what it is? I'm applying <laughs> all the obvious fucking society-driven uh, expe- um, uh, sorry, um, uh, preconceptions yep. because your initial interaction was sexual, whereas mine might be uh, comedy or right. broadcasting on mm-hmm. streaming platforms. So I go, well, because they like me, as, <laughs> because they're a fan of mine because I play video games and funny, then when I had a real friend with them, I never felt any threat because there was no sexual thing. But that's bullshit because some of these people I know definitely want to fuck me. Oh, definitely. But then it's, I feel like I'm I'm not trying to reduce the friendship that you guys have, but I think what I've done is re- I'm reducing men to saying, <laughs> if it's a man and he's watching you because you're a beautiful girl and he wants to watch you have some kind of sexual interaction that he's going to then enjoy sexually as well through the medium of online fucking PCs, no. um, he's incapable <laughs> of ever truly appreciating your... Uh, your non-sexual elements. Right. Because I think men are generally like that. A lot of them are. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in, in, even in my experience, and I deal with yeah. a lot of them. Um, you know, one of my one of my good friends now is a female, and one of them is a male. Yeah. Um, the oh, male. what, viewers? These are the viewers? Yeah, the these are the, these are the ones that are my, my okay. friends. Um, one actually found me in a lookalike contest. <laughs> yeah. he came, that's how he came across. He put in an image and like looked for image, similar images to it, and mine popped up. Like, he has never viewed my porn. He's married, happily, lives in France. I've met him. Wait, but hang on a second. How did he reach out and start some kind of he, conversation? He with you? then found out who I was. The picture had its tag in Google. You're telling me this guy who Googled an image and found a photo of you with your name on anything has never watched your pornography on the internet? I honestly don't think so. Lies! I don't think so. No, and I'm not even And I'm going to be honest. I, I, <laughs> And this is only because I've met him and I actually, like, I truly, honestly believe he never has. I believe he watches porn. I just don't think he watches mine. I think No! He- impossible. Now, and I'm not saying that he can't just be your platonic friend, but come on. No, I honestly don't. Come on! Because he almost acts more like a father figure and I think it's just really weird for him. <sighs> okay. I find that possible, but it for me it feels so improbable. Oh, that's okay. I just think... If you've used the internet to look up an image, the next thing you just go is like, 
I mean, he obviously click on the video tab. You don't even have to do anything except go from the image tab to the video tab, and it would be like. I mean, I guess I could just play a couple. I just don't think so. I really don't. Wow. Now the other one, I do believe she has seen it. She's fucking filthy. Just, kind of. I'm just exaggerating. How are you? She, She's like a secret freak. Um, you don't see her coming. I am Love so death, surprised but... by that. I'm surprised by that because I think that I, I'm never going to lie to any of my friends who are in the adult film industry. I've watched every single one of my adult performer friends. Of course. Fuck, even the men. I've watched their scenes. Yeah. Because I like watching sex. I think it's enjoyable. I like the voyeuristic aspect. Of course. And I'm also very capable of um, hard differentiating between sexual interaction with someone and my friendship interaction with them or my even my more than that love and affection right. so there's friends that i have in romania for instance who i have both a sexual relationship with her but he is involved in it but me and him are not involved right and then but also i have a complete separate very strong friendship with both of them that right doesn't, isn't affected at all by yeah, that which i think is uh less prevalent in females as a general, that kind of outlook of sex and the and the being able to completely separate from some kind of emotional attachment and friendship. A lot of the times, for a lot of them, for me, there is a very distinct separation between love and sex. Yeah, but sex is also my business, so I feel like in this industry, especially if you don't have that distinction, it's going to get you in trouble. Really? I feel like it can. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I feel like it could. It could be in in trouble, I guess. Of um. Yeah, getting caught up in feelings when you're just doing work. Right. And vice versa. Yeah. Uh, losing interest in the home relationship, you know, if you have one. Right. Um, because you're fucking someone at work. Exactly. Yeah, man. Reason wow, what things. a minefield. You kind of work through a minefield, don't you? Kind adult of. Adult performance. Oh, what's the best aspect of your job? What's the bit that you absolutely adore beyond enjoying beyond fucking? Beyond the, the, the sex part? Yeah, because that's um, The freedom. <laughs> the freedom I have with my job. To do whatever I want, to not do what I want, to work when you mean I want. In terms of your time, having oh, your yeah. time, your energy, mm-hmm. and how? What's what are things that you love to do with that time that is not sex industry related? Um, because I don't have much of it. I love to sit at home. I love to read books. I like to play my games. Oh, you play I like video to, games as well. I do, and I like to just watch TV and new movies that I've been needing to catch up. That's on. relaxing stuff. You got yeah. any other passions? You know, mm. I mean, like I love doing outdoors things. I love kayaking, going down a river. I love hiking. Oh shit! I can already see what's gonna happen. <laughs> I can already see it. Right? You're what? Twenty four, right? I think you're gonna get to like thirty one, and you're gonna wrap up in the business. You would have done a few good little business moves over the next few years to the point where you've already got a nice fucking couple of million dollar home. You got some savings, and you're gonna set up some kind of wildlife and outdoor experiential kind of camp <gasps> for kids <laughs> and young adults young adults trying to find themselves and so and you're going to go out and you're going to do these run these experiences and you're going to teach them all about the animals because you're super into animals <laughs> you're going to fucking do the camp and they get a friendship badge at the end of it and every time you give one to the kids you'll think of this and how much fun it was to sit here and and spend 40 minutes watching me try and set up technical and then hopefully I just text you and go hey Jeff remember that one time that you couldn't set up the tech equipment. Yeah, yeah. And you sent me a picture of a, a raccoon <laughs> just fucking chilling in an oak tree. Actually, my, my true passion is I want to go to vet school, um, become a veterinarian, obviously, if I'm going to vet school. But a mountain vet. <laughs> I Well, what I want to do is I want to help people that can't get their animals the help that they need. When I was young, I lost two animals that were very, very, very near and dear. <laughs> in my backyard, unfortunately. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Touche. That was a good comeback. Yeah. Um, but I was maybe 11 at the time. There was nothing I could do. I felt hopeless. My parents were no help in the situation. What was it, doggies? Um, a dog and a cat. One had a litter of kittens and she got one stuck inside and it caused a massive infection and it killed her. And my dog died of heartworms. Something a dog should never die of anymore. So I didn't bring you here just to depress you. <laughs> like, can no. you tell me some more sad stories? No. Hey, what was childhood like? <laughs> tell me about your dying pets. No, but there's a positive aspect on it. There's okay. a positive outlook. Okay, here we go. This is what I want to do is I want to get my vet degree and I want to be able to open a clinic where if a little girl comes in or a little boy comes in and they said, my animal is sick, but I can't pay for it. 
I don't need the money. Say, go home, I just, go I just home help and them. Search for your mum and dad's drawers and find their wedding ring. <laughs> Bring them back here, and I'll say their your mom and dad probably you. still don't have their wedding rings. Oh, They're at the pawn shop. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, that's fair. All right, okay. So you want a, 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 like a, a pro people. bono veterinarian service? Yeah. Yeah. For, for people who who Can't really need it. it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, first of all, uh, a wonderful, you know, idyllic kind of. Um, I guess ambition to have. I think that's lovely. I hope you make it a success. So do I. Uh, secondly, good luck in America, where you can't even get fucking free health care for humans. This is terrifying, well, that's, right? That's why we set up but you other very, things. You do it very specifically in certain areas. I do. Certain you know what? I feel first. like you would get a lot of people who own pets are wonderful at fundraising for things like that mm-hmm. Absolutely. because they genuinely love it. So almost they, care for they almost pay the veterinary bills. By donating to oh, other yeah. things. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So you got to get some sad fucking puppies. Just, oh, you know, poor old Stephen only has three days to live. And this is his his owner, Jack. And Jack's like a little boy in a wheelchair. And he's just like, he has to be in a wheelchair because he has to be there. <laughs> no, it's got to be like double sad. Like, and he just goes, well, You're trying to turn this Jack, into like some Jack, ASPCA shit. Jack's normally the one that runs for me because as you can see, I can't. Sad face. And you... Zooms in on you and you're like, oh, there you go. Exactly, you've nailed it already. <laughs> and, then, and then he'll be like, just, but if you donate a little money, we can help save him. Maybe someone else's pet. Boom. Sad cat. <coughs> Coffin. has got cancer. Cat cancer. That's terrible. Yeah. I've lost cats to cancer. There you go. See, so, lost, so your tears will be real on the, on the commercial. Very much so. I reckon you could do it. I reckon you could do it. What are you going to call it? I don't know. We just came up with the idea. No, come on. This oh, is an God. idea you've had for a while. By now, you should have a business plan in action. Let's yeah. get that together. It's gonna, I'll give you six months to draw out the business plan. <laughs> I want a pitch deck. But I'm, so, I'm talking like, let's go. We, got, we can have like a good name. So is it going to be like a Kenner's? Kenner's? Oh, I was going to do like a pun on Kenner's something kennels, but then I realized that'd be KKK. And that's not... <laughs> that is I not, could just call it Kenner's Kennels. Kenner's Kennels. And the K and the K are back to back. Yeah, like the little... Yeah, and the... the K is like a person with an arm, and in one side it's holding a cat, and on the other side it's holding a dog. Kenner's kennels. Boom! We didn't even have to fucking brainstorm that. Or I just want to do the pet vet because I was the penthouse vet? pet of the year. It's a play on. You were the <laughs> penthouse pet of the year in 2016. What? How, how do they make you a pet? What does that mean? Um, that means you get your editor, you get the cover of the magazine, and you get your centerfold, and nice. then you go into a contest with the rest of the 11 other women do you don't have to like wear little kitten ears or something like no. that is it okay because i know like what a playboy bunny is but penthouse they have the penthouse pets is yep. that kind of thing yep the penthouse that's a little pets. bit i don't like that name i don't like calling you a pet even though it's a great it. it's a great you know a wonderful uh kind of award to to receive yeah um certainly in that industry as well in the modeling industry that'd be amazing right that's but quite an honor yeah but then I don't like the naming of it. You could be like the penthouse goddesses or the penthouse... Si- Do you know what I mean? Something that elevates you rather than owns you. Yeah. Well, was with the times. The penthouse... The penthouse... I don't know. The penthouse princesses. Never has bothered me, but I also don't mind being Shit. a pet. You don't mind being a pet? Not not sometimes. Well, so. Hannah said... So you, but you, you're, so you are submissive. You're sub in the bedroom, but then you have a limit to your submissive desires. I am... I am submissive with men. If I can dom you, I don't want you. Oh, really? <laughs> it's bad. If, that's how I'm... if you read that you can dom a guy, that's not into it. Surely you've done um, scenes where you've turned up and the actor you're playing alongside, you've gone, oh, this guy's a fucking wet rag, isn't he? Sometimes. I've had one or two of those. Um, but with women, I can be either or. I tend to lean more dominant with women. Really? Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Uh, do you think that's... No, because one of those things is incredibly <laughs> in touch with your feminine side, perhaps, yeah. archetypally, which is going, I want a man to I just be wanted... strong and pick me up right. and fuck me, right? Mm-hmm. But then the other side of it, wanting to dominate women, is actually quite a masculine school of thought to go, well, I want to be... A... Yeah, I'm in charge. Yeah, you're a yin and yang. I am. I'm my own yin and yang. You got the you got the, <laughs> the, 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 the pum pum, as we established earlier, <laughs> and also the giant phallus, perhaps. Pretty much. Fuck, dude. If you had both um, sex organs, do you think you'd still do pornography? Duh, duh. Really? Think of, the, think, think of the money you could make off of that. I don't know if there's that much of a market. Oh, I promise there? you people would watch Hermaphrodite it. Hermaphrodite porn. I, I promise you people would watch it. It's like midget porn. <laughs> people couldn't help Slightly it. Slightly different. I mean, People couldn't help it. Midgets technically are born without, you know, something, well, i.e. three feet. Yeah. Whereas, you know, 
hermaphrodites, they're getting all the all the treats. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Salt and pepper. Who doesn't love a spicy mix? (laughs) He's talking himself into it, ladies and gentlemen. I I was recently (laughs) thinking about um, my dating history. And I had like lots of shitty women come along, right? And I just went, ah, maybe I should just go out to fucking and having fun like I used to. So I decided to do that. (laughs) But I, um, at a certain point, I honestly sat there and went, I wonder if I could, I've had so many bad experiences. I should probably just do the intelligent thing and, you know, just consider sucking a dick. (laughs) Not because I'm gay or bisexual. I don't have any sexual attraction towards men. But I just thought, you know what? You never really know until you try. I never tried (laughs) having my dick sucked by a man. Maybe I could enjoy it as the sensation as much as a woman. And maybe then I could also enjoy other things as much. Like when I was a kid, I didn't like broccoli. Hated it. Couldn't stand it. Get that shit away from me. What is that green monster? (laughs) No, 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 no. You guys are bed without any fucking dessert. I don't care. No. No. (laughs) But now, can't get enough of the florets. Love a little broccoli. (laughs) Oh, long stem. I love broccoli. Little bit of butter. Do it up in the pan. Lightly seared. Delicioso. Give it to me. Raw in a salad. Fuck yes. I'm just saying maybe cock could be like that for me. It could be. <laughs> just, you never know until you try. I mean, I would probably start off with letting another dude suck your dick before you go straight to dick yeah, sucking. Yeah, make him do it first. Yeah, see if that even, like, if it, if it doesn't spark there, I would say probably don't go forward because you're probably not going to enjoy it anymore. Start small. Baby steps. You never know, though. Maybe, maybe, maybe actually sitting on a dick is way nicer than just getting yours sucked. That's where my G-spot is, yo. I don't know. Maybe. Never had it happen. Anyway, I decided against it. You could buy an anal kit. What, to, Practice at to, home. Test the, to test the, test the, the theory out. Wow. No, I'm all right. I don't really, I don't really like water. things in my ass. don't mind a tongue. I like a rim job, but I'm not really into things in my ass. Is there any no-nos? Do you have a no-no list for performance? Oh, yeah. I don't do anal. Never do anal? Uh, well, not on film. Hey! <laughs> is that, now, Some things I keep to myself right is, now. I was going to say, is that to keep that to yourself for uh, any partners? You know, it's like, all right, that's my... That's my um, special. That's my special place. No, not really. I just I don't know if I ever want to. I don't typically enjoy it a whole lot. Okay. So I don't know if I ever want to commit to doing an entire scene to it. I'll yeah. never say never because I said I'd never do boy girl and well that was a lie. So. Old Jimmy Dean came around. <laughs> well. Dive in there. Dove in there. Literally. Very much so. Um, hang on a second. So no anal. That's quite rare. Okay. Yep, I don't do anal. But also, you know what? If you ever decide to in like a few years' time that scene people have been crying out for it you're just holding on for the big bucks you'll wait until they get to like six figures i never get there but you never know you <laughs> never know you don't know what's gonna happen to pornography this is true you never listen know. there might be a new app out soon that is exclusively for porn actresses well i mean like fan centro but something exciting new that everyone starts to use they'll change some legislation so pornography is legal all of a sudden it's like you know what i mean boom 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 you're legit and you've got seven and a half million fans, and that's the day you want to go. Hey, if we can get this Kickstarter to two milli, I'll do your anal. Butt scenes coming up, <laughs> douche. I think not. not <laughs> douche is in kadoosh. Not please douche, douche. beforehand. <laughs> sure, I mean don't do that. Enema, if anything. Enema definitely. Don't, definitely don't enema. Don't stick a douche up there. Okay, so no anal. Anything else? Um, I don't do anything that's typically degrading. Um. I like to try to do things that are like, what, like telling you you'll never be you'll never be good at veterinary veterinary services. I can't say it, but you'll never be good at being a vet. I typically That's don't. That's I don't. No, nah, I don't give two shits about what they say. Typically. Um, okay, so not word stuff. Uh, like, more physical. Um, I don't like to be spit on on my face. Like nothing like that. You know, I, I used to when I was nineteen, I dated a girl called Dana Diamond, and she's. I love Dana. She's. I mean, she's fucking nuts. She's all right she's though. She's crazy. She's a, she's a good soul. Her. Actually, actually, I. You know what? I don't know her since fifteen years ago, so I don't know what she's like. Right. And that's you know, it's unfair of me to say. We were both a bit nuts when we were younger, and uh, terrible. I believe that. Date. Yeah, but she was <laughs> fucking filth, and I've seen her. She's cropped up obviously on when I've been looking at pornography. Oh, there's a video, and I'll always click and have a you know, give her a little round of applause. But she um. She's fucking like filth. <laughs> She's like spit in my mouth, come in my eye, then fucking blow the cum into my ass, and then I'll eat it, and then I want two guys to fucking piss on my tits while I'm. It's really. I don't know if she does the yellow and brown, but she's very filthy. And I feel like that's 
the way it goes, that's when you lose love of the thing. You have to go more and more and more over the top. Yeah, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah, I, even a bit more. For me, that's not why I'm here. You like it as an empowering experience. Right. Then, then something where you're going to come away feeling like you were taking advantage of. Exactly. That's great. I, I like to raise myself up, not lower myself down. And always been like that since the first, first porn. Mm -hmm. Always. That's great. See, I feel like if women, more women went into the industry in that way... And maybe that is just a sign of the times. You know, you're a younger woman in the industry. Well, I think that would end up with a lot less horror stories about pornography and a lot more women going, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Very empowered in what I do and how I do well, it. I think a lot of girls get in really young and that doesn't help. I mean, I got in really young and I'm not saying that my experience is bad, but I also feel like a lot of the girls haven't partied yet. This is their first time with money. They're on their own. Yeah. They're in LA. Yeah. You know, it's... Guy it's rolls easy up with to a cigar get, and a it's easy to get caught up. And he goes, hey, baby, you want to come party with me? She's like, yeah, 1950s caricature. I'd love to. I got a little blow. You want to do a little? Oh, I've never tried it. I'm just from the small town in the south. You got a beautiful mouth. And then shit happens. See? And that's, that's how it goes down the train, man. Man, yeah, I think girls either need to do it the way you're doing it with a very empowered mindset or wait until they're 30. Because I just think... Hell, wait till you're just over over 21. Get to 21. Get to 21 because I feel like when you're 21, typically you got a little more of your shit together than you did when you were 18. I know I did. Yeah. I had a lot more of my shit together at 21 than I did at 18. Yeah. Do you think it made you grow up fast working um, in the sex industry? Honestly, I grew up fast from my childhood, um, becoming a mother very young. Oh, you're a mom? Well, not actually. Uh, Having a child. Brother. Brother, mother. Oh, Jesus Christ. All no, right. I'm not a mother. <laughs> wait, I wait, don't can have we, kids. Can we also highlight when she says brother, mother, that doesn't mean she <laughs> oh, God. Okay. is the mother of her own brother as well. No, she didn't fuck no. her dad. I wasn't what in Arkansas. What happened is that it was uh, you raised your little brother. I raised my brother. brother. He was born when I was five. You were he, a, an, assi an assigned mum kind of thing. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that makes you mature. Yeah, I so dated a few that... girls who are like, who've raised younger siblings and they're always very mature for their yeah. age i mean i had two jobs at the age of 15 i had to have my counselor sign off on my grades saying so why are you not completely fucking mental by now it sounds like you've had a pretty hard you know it was a hard start to life it wasn't easy and i'll i have my issues with it um yeah. but honestly i've gotten past most of it a lot of it's how you deal with your own shit and how you therapy I you do therapy? never did therapy. Um, I was forced into therapy as a child, and it did not help me. Yeah. It instead hindered me and made it worse. Oh, really? Um, so I, I never needed it. I, in my own time, kind of dealt with how I needed... I dealt with it the way I needed to deal with it. Sure. I processed all my own individual issues, and I went, you know what? This, this can't happen anymore. It is what it is. You can't change it. There's no need to dwell on it. Yeah. It happened. You can either let it cripple you forever... Or you can use it to propel you forward. Yeah. And so I chose to move forward. I empathize with that very deeply. And it's only recently, you know, I wish I'd done that at 24 instead of spending a good decade, I feel like. Well, actually, no, eight years. No, a decade. <laughs> From 18 to 28, probably. Just hitting it pretty fucking hard a lot. And achieving. Yeah. But the amount of partying I did, the amount of money and that was wasted on various narcotics and drink and stuff. I, God, I could have achieved 10 times what I already have, which is already three people's lifetimes, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, that's very good of you to hit that early on. Because you do really have to hit a point when you go, all right, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be the victim. For instance, in a very small way, uh, getting physically fit has been a thing for me now for a, a couple of months. And I used to over go over it in my head all the time. Oh, I've got to think about this and this and this and this. Got to get out there. Got to, here's a hundred reasons why I'm fat and shit and I don't look the way I want to look and I'm a piece of shit and blah, blah. And then I wouldn't go. Now right. I've got the power of thought to just go move beyond it. So as soon as I go, I should really go and work out. I go, all right. And I stand up and I pick up my bag, get in my car and I fucking leave. Yeah. And I do it and then I feel amazing. Right. And that's what you have to do. Yeah. At some point you have to go, you have to quit being the victim of yourself. Oh, that's, you, that's great advice. Yeah. You just have to move forward from it. The victim of yourself, yeah. And then you end up being your own... You kind uh, of become your own hero in a way. Or you run the risk, if you don't do that, of becoming your own abuser. You can. Constantly I mean, punishing yourself about something that was out of your control anyway and that isn't. And, and I do that. I'm a self-admitted, I do that. Um, I'm trying to get... That's something that I'm very 
much working on and have gotten a lot better. Good. Um, but even things that are still sometimes out of my control, I know there's nothing I can do. Yeah. But it still gets to me. Of course. You know, it's a human. Right. Damn humanity. You are human, right? Well, that has yet to be You're determined. not a Scientologist yet, because that would make you a pizza. <laughs> no. Yeah. They live around the corner from me. I'm scared of them. <laughs> I don't blame you. I would be. I'm fucking terrified of Scientologists. They got a lot of power, a lot it's of okay. sway, a lot of power, a lot of money. It's okay. I'm scared of Catholics, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, Catholic. they're more fucking terrifying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That Pope. Oh, What's that? Oh, is that your phone? Hold on, that's my phone. That's all right. <laughs> what time is it? It's, it's, it's fucking 7.09. I got to go down and do a show. <laughs> Yeah. This is perfect timing. Okay. Well, you know what? I feel like that was good advice to wrap up the podcast on. You've just basically told everyone, fans, new fans, my listeners, uh, and everyone in between, that don't be the victim of your own... Don't be don't the be your victim, own victim of your own situation. Yeah. yeah. Move beyond only it. only you have the power to move on. Fucking inspirational. <laughs> it would only be more inspirational if you were wearing a thong on Instagram with your butt towards the camera looking over your we shoulder. We can make this happen. I'm wearing a thong it. right now. <laughs> I am wearing a pink thong You right have to now. do it like the, um, the Instagram <laughs> The Instagram girl. That's how the Instagram girls do it. They have the, the underwear up in the, in the butt crack and then it's over the shoulder. It's like, you mean- remember, you can be anything you need to be. Just always find your inner self, your truth. Oh, right. there you go. I mean, kind of, well, that's not an inspiration. You show me your bum. I am. That's a wonderful that's bum. My bum. Congratulations. Thank it looks you. great. It looks great. Thank you. That's my bum. All right. I got to go and do a show. And uh, <laughs> I'm very glad we got to talk. I'm glad we made it happen. Um, if you're down in LA, come on again, you know, in the Definitely. future. We only scratched the surface of who you are, I think. <laughs> it takes different lengths of time for different it does. people. You know? uh, it takes time for you to trust and open. Me spending half an hour trying to set up the fucking tech side. <laughs> I hope it wasn't a pain in the ass. If people want to check you out, um, obviously there's lots of um, websites with your stuff on there, but is there a localized home where you like to put up your own content and where people can become a fan and uh, check out what you do outside of just yeah. pornography as well? Go check out my Instagram, Real Kenna James. Go check out Real my... Kenna James. That's K-E-N-N-A and J-A-M-E-S. That's the one. Twitter is Kenna James 21 um, I have a Facebook not the best place to talk to me, but yeah. if you want to follow me there, you can. Follow on there. Why not? Become yeah. a fan on the page. It all helps. It all helps the algorithms. Exactly. Um, and anything else you want to come uh, that's coming up that you want to plug? Have you got any movies coming out soon or anything in particular or a new website launching or are you going to be starting doing premium content yourself or your fans directly? Um, just all I can say is keep up with my social media. That's that it. holds all my updated info. That's the best place to that's do it. That's the best way to do it. And uh, and thank you very much for coming on and for talking to me. Thank I'm going you to play. Me. I'm going to play some outro music. It's going to happen. Look how smooth and technologically amazing this is. And I'm going to pick off here. Bye, Kenna. Bye. Bye.